What's going on guys? Boss Bay 6 here, back to our video and today we have finally made it. It's been a couple months or a few months in this case, but we're finally back. The NFL is coming back and the predictions are here. Cringy intro aside, yes, this is my 2024 week one predictions of the NFL season. And uh, yeah, we've been craving football for about four or five months now at this point. Oh, uh, granted, we got college football and the UFL going on, but it's not the NFL. This is where the big boys play. So, we got some interesting matchups here, and um, some that might be really good, some might be really bad, and some just might be in between. But, we always must embrace the chaos. So, let me know in the comments section who you think is going to win these games, and without further ado, let's start off with the first game, the Thursday night game. An AFC Championship rematch from the past year. We have the Baltimore Ravens versus the Kansas City Chiefs. We all know what happened this past uh, this past January. The Ravens, best team going into the entire season. And they completely shat their pants against the Chiefs, who were limping their way into, uh, into the Ravens Stadium. And look what happened to the Chiefs. They won another Super Bowl. So, yeah. Um... I'm willing to bet there's not going to be a, a, a peaceful game between these two. There's probably going to be a bit of a blood feud, especially considering how the Ravens again blew it. And, uh, yeah, it's not going to be pretty. Chiefs offseason was pretty rough considering Rushy Rice decided to play GTA 5 in real life. And a lot of people getting um, arrested for drug and animal abuse charges. Looking at you, Isaiah Bugs. Yeah, uh, the Chiefs are starting to uh, look a little mortal in this case. But, they are opening the season again. But the last time the Chiefs uh, ha had the season opener, they actually lost to the up-and-coming Detroit Lions. Will history repeat itself? Will Deja Vu kick in? I'm going to actually say no. I'm going to say the Chiefs are going to win this one. But I did say they were going to win last year, and they lost in one of the most confusing games I've ever seen possible. But then again, Baltimore's defense is looking really good, and plus they got Derrick Henry, of course. So, who knows? Maybe the Ravens will stomp all over the Chiefs. We can only tell, but I'm going to go with Chiefs with this one. Best be safe than sorry, I guess. So, uh, yeah, I think they're going to be the first team to win the uh, the first game of the NFL season this year. Following that, we have a Friday night game. We're going all the way to Brazil for the Green Bay Packers versus the Philadelphia Eagles. And it's kind of funny, too, considering that Brazil doesn't have any teams that are supposed to wear green because of an opposing country, I guess. And yet, the NFL picked the two teams that have the most green on them. I'm just saying. Anyways, these teams both made it into the playoffs last year with Green Bay getting uh, past the wild card because Philadelphia decided it was the best idea to hire Matt Patricia as their defensive coordinator. Good job there. Yeah, Philly, I mean, they are starting to have a bit of a step back a little bit considering that Jason Kelsey retired. And the Packers, on the other hand, are starting to come up in the rankings a little bit because while they're the youngest team, I think they're the youngest team in the NFL right now. If not, then that's probably the Houston Texans. But, yeah, um, it's going to be interesting how these two teams will interact. However, as much as I want to pick the Packers to win, I'm probably going to go with Philly on this one because I just think their offense might be a little bit better. And not to mention A.J. Dillon's out the end. Uh, out the season with a neck injury, which, oof. But, yeah, that sucks. But, hey, will it be go Pecko or will it be Fly Eagles Fly? The battle between Barry and Tom Grassi, we can only speculate. So, I'm going to go with Philly on this one. Well, I'm a little bit. This will pretty, be a pretty fun game. And then we get to the Sunday games, which be on the lookout for the streams on this one. The first one, we have an NFC South matchup between the Carolina Panthers and the New Orleans Saints. The Panthers are on a rebuild. They are trying to do everything they can to stay relevant, despite the fact they really haven't been relevant since Cam Newton left. And even in Cam Newton at the end of his career was pretty bad. Bryce Young looked horrible his rookie year, but they did get uh, Xavier Legit and... 
that dude's a national treasure uh, in the outset of things. So, they'll, again, I don't think they're going to be good, but they might be better than they were last year. We can only speculate. Meanwhile, the Saints, I have no idea what the hell they're doing. I don't even think Dark Angel Drew knows what they're doing. Shout out to him. Uh, yeah, this team has not been... They haven't been the same since the 2018 NFC Championship game, and yeah, it's going to... I think it's starting to all come down on them. I don't think they're going to be good at all this year. And again, if you want to know my full thoughts on the all the teams, just check out my live stream that I did where I predicted how every team is going to be doing this season. So yeah, it's going to be rough. That being said, I'm still going to go with the Saints with this one because I think they just have more weapons. It just depends on how Carr plays. That's literally it. If Carr has a somewhat decent game, I think the Saints are going to win. So, it's going to be an ugly game. It's not going to be a good game. So, uh, yeah. Well, I'm going to go with the Saints with this one. Following that, we have the Minnesota Vikings versus the New York Giants. Oh, boy. Two of the most wildest franchises I've ever seen. The Vikings... So damn cursed. It's not even funny. Um, it, this team can't go, can't have anything right going for them. One, they lost J.J. McCarthy due to injury, and now they have Sam Darnold as their QB. And not to mention, too, that their rookie quarterback literally died before he even had a chance to see the field. This team is cursed, have I mentioned. Yeah, it, this team is not going to go anywhere. Same with the Giants. You still have Daniel Jones on your roster. And the best player, the best quarterback out of that entire matchup might be Drew Locke. Yeah, it's not going to be good this year for the G-Men. Which of these is going to suck less? I'm probably going to go with the Vikings on this one because I think their offense is a little bit better. And at least Sam Darnold has a couple decent to good games. Jones... I just... I... He's a, he, he, I'm willing to bet he's a nice guy, but he fucking blows as a QB, so. Yeah, uh, I think Minnesota's going to take the cake with this one here. Following that, we have the Tennessee Titans versus the Chicago Bears. The Titans are going through a rebuild. Nothing more, nothing less. Will Levis looks like he could be the QB of the future. He did actually have some really good games last year. But they're going through a rebuild, and it's going to be pretty obvious that they're going to be... It's going to take them a little bit before they start becoming uh, division contenders again. Meanwhile, the Bears, while well, the tanking looked like it paid off because they basically won the entire offseason, you got your QB of the future and Caleb Williams, you got Roma Dunze, and you got so many of our people on offense, DJ Moore, Cole Komet's starting to come into his own. And the... So many more, and not to mention you got Montez Sweat on your defense. It, what the Bears are mainly just coming down to defense because their defense was pretty lackluster up until Montez came um, from Washington. So, yeah, they started doing a little bit better, but who knows? Maybe they might win the division this year. I think they're just going to barely miss out in the playoffs, but that's just me. So... I'm going with the Bears with this one. I think Williams is going to have himself a pretty solid game. And uh, it just depends on how the Titans are going to do, which I don't think they're going to do anything a note. So, yeah, I'm going to go with the Bears with this one. Following up, so we get the AFC South. We have an AFC South matchup. We have the Houston Texans versus the Indianapolis Colts. Now, the Texans came out of nowhere. And, uh, yeah, this is a Week 18 matchup to see whoever wins. Not only won the division, but got to win the playoffs. And the Colts lost it on a brutal drop pass. Oh, God, that was so bad. Tyler Goodson is literally having demons. Um, uh, that's his sleep paralysis demon. So, yeah, C.J. Stroud had one of the best rookie years of all time, in my opinion. Anthony Richardson was looking good. Until he got hurt, so... Yeah, that kind of hurt in the, in the outset of things. But Carter Minshew did all right, but now he's with... Um, now he's with the Las Vegas Raiders. So, it's going to be interesting to see how the, uh, how the Colts are going to be this year. 
Uh, I think the Texans are going to win. Uh, Colts might make it a fun competitive game. I can see a little fun rivalry between these two teams. But I think the Texans is all in all the better structure team because not only you have Stephon Diggs, you got Joe Mixon, you got Will Anderson, and you got um, uh, Tank Dells coming back from his injury. And not to mention he got shot as well. So, yeah, that's always fun. So, yeah, I'm curious to see how the Texans are going to do this year. I'm kind of curious how the Colts are going to be as well. So, yeah, this should be a fun matchup, but I'm going to go with the Texans with this one. Following that, we have the New England Patriots versus the Cincinnati Bengals. The Patriots had one of the worst seasons I think I've ever had, seen New England had in decades, and about three decades too late, if you ask me. Uh, we were all praying for New England's downfall when they become the dynasty of the NFL for 20 plus years and it's finally slowing to come down on them. Meanwhile the Bengals they had a very very rough season it was very dire they lost Joe Burrow to injury and once Joe Burrow was done their season kind of became lost after that. But now that Joe Burrow, Joe Burrow if you will is healthy and looks a lot like Cody Rhodes for some weird reason Adrenaline and myself the Bengals QB is Joe Burrow. But, yeah, that's a little bit odd. And what's the deal with Jamar Chase? Is he still, is he going to play? Who knows? They're they're taking it day by day as a quote, so we don't know if Jamar is actually going through an injury or not. And, yeah, they lost Joe Mixon, but they did up their defense a little bit, or their offense a little bit, because they kind of needed that because their own line was not that good last year. So, yeah, um, but let's just hope that, since these O-line issues can be intact, they're going to be the better team. I'm going to go with Cincy with this one. I don't see New England doing anything. No. Drake May might be okay at best, but he's got no one to throw to, basically. He doesn't have any weapons, per se. Like, Kendrick Bourne, yeah, he was mid. And, I mean, Hunter Henry was okay, but he was barely getting the ball thrown to him. So, yeah, uh, I think Cincy's going to win. Nothing more, nothing less. Next up, this one should be an interesting matchup. We have the Arizona Cardinals versus the Buffalo Bills. The Cardinals, they got Marvin Harrison Jr. That's literally all you need to say. While the Cardinals were terrible last year, they were one of the worst teams in the entire year, I'll give them credit for making it competitive. That's all you can really give them credit for. And the four games that they did win, they won up against, at the time, teams that were battling for the division or that were even going to the playoffs. So, again, you can give the Cardinals credit for at least making it competitive. Meanwhile, the Bills, it's just it's just sad at this point. Buffalo, they're going to have a great season, but either lose to the Chiefs or lose to the Bengals in heartbreaking fashion in the playoffs. I'm not sure if it will happen this season. I still think that Buffalo might miss out on the playoffs, but who knows? Maybe they'll pull magic out of their ass. Who really knows? Um, this could be a fun matchup. Um... I'm going to still go with Buffalo on this one. I was really wanting to give it to Arizona, but Arizona, they still have issues on defense that they should uh, clear up. But it depends on who Josh Allen's throwing to. If he's throwing to Coleman, cool. If he's throwing to NVS, if he's back from injury, then good luck with that. So, yeah. Oh, no. Oh, and, uh, you want another injured person? Have Matt Milano have a tricep injury. Or a bicep injury, my bad. Yeah, uh, because it's not like that guy went through a lot of injuries himself. God damn it, man. It was bad enough when Tredevious Wyatt was made of glass, and now we have Matt Milano. Hooray! But yeah, I'm going with Buffalo with this one. Next up, this one should be a fun matchup. We have the Battle for Florida. We have the Jacksonville Jaguars versus the Miami Dolphins. The Jaguars just collapsed at the end of the year. It was looking good, and then it wasn't. Yes, Trevor Lawrence was hurt, but that doesn't excuse the fact that maybe you should have let him rest and let him heal. Yes, you had C.J. Bather, who sucked ass, but at least you would have made, had Lawrence be healed by the time he played. But nope, that's not what happened. In Jacksonville... Yeah, you got Brian Thomas Jr., who looked really good in LSU. We'll just see how he turns out this year. Meanwhile, the Dolphins, you have one of the most offensive loaded rosters, and yet you can't even win a playoff game. 
They haven't won a playoff game since 2000. Yeah, that's uh, that's not that good there, mate. The longest team in NFL history to not have a playoff game or to win a playoff game, and yeah, it's looking really, really, really rough. I still think Miami's going to win this game. It might be an offensive showcase, if we're going to be completely honest. So, yeah, Miami did lose Christian Wilkins, but they kind of upgraded a little bit getting uh, Chop Robertson, so... Uh, or Robinson, not Robertson, Robinson. So, yeah, we'll, we'll just see how Miami turns uh, things around here. But I'm going with Miami with this one. Next up, we have Arthur Smith's revenge game. We have the Pittsburgh Steelers versus the Atlanta Falcons. Yes, Arthur Smith is in Pittsburgh, and all of Pittsburgh is in hell right now. The Steelers last year, they had the same game the year they've been having since... Ever since Tomlin came into the fray. Ever since 2000, what, 7 or 8? They've been having the same damn year almost every single year. And uh, I have a feeling that curse is going to be broken here soon. Meanwhile, the Falcons was so damn frustrating last year. And it still pisses me off that this team could have won the division and they kept missing. You have Kyle Pitts, Strickland, and Abidjan Robertson and you can't use them. You have to resort to Johnny Smith and Kaderil Hodge. And Desmond Ritter as your quarterback? Jesus Christ. I've seen seven-year-olds that have a better offensive mind than Arthur Smith. My God, he was a terrible head coach. Thankfully, he got canned. With Atlanta, I don't know what the hell they're doing. I don't think they know what the hell they're doing. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be, um, I guess interesting to see how uh let's see how the falcons are going to be this year but uh this might be an ugly game so i'm gonna shockingly go with pittsburgh but i think i think offensively uh atlanta is the better team on paper but the Steelers are going to bullshit their way through a win because that's what they always do so i'm gonna go with pittsburgh with this one Next up, we have the Denver Broncos versus the Seattle Seahawks. A rematch from the opener two years ago when Chef Ross was there. That was fun. No, it was not. The Broncos, they got Bo Nix. He's not going to be good. I mean, he might, he might be just okay at best, but I don't really know how he's going to be this season. Meanwhile, the Seahawks... I think they're just going to be fine. Nothing more, nothing less. Uh, this might be kind of a lopsided game, if you ask me, because I don't know how it's going to really turn out, but I still think Seattle's going to win. I just don't think Denver's going to be good at all this year. Sorry, Perna, but ah, this ain't going to do it for me, Chiefs. So, yeah, I'm going to go with Seattle with this one. I just think they just have a better defense overall. Um, so, yeah, I, uh, I just think that Seattle is just going to be the better team, and that's why I'm picking them. Next up, we have an AFC West competition. We have the Las Vegas Raiders versus the Los Angeles Chargers. The Raiders got Brock Bowers in the draft, which shocked the hell out of me, but I kind of dig what they're going for here. Um, it just, the main thing that's really holding the back is just who's going to be throwing Devontae Adams the ball. That's literally it. You either have AOC or or Gardner Mitchell, the battle of mid. <laughs> That's basically it. Um, it's not that they're bad QBs. It's just that they'll have a good game one week, and then they'll have two game, two bad games the week, like two weeks afterwards. It's very inconsistent. It's like Ryan Fitzpatrick in a way. Um, so, yeah, uh, it's going to be uh, interesting to see who's going to be. Uh, Throwing them onto the ball. I think um, uh, Minshew won the uh, starting QB spot. So, I mean, okay, cool, I guess. But that's not really going to do a whole lot. And meanwhile, the Chargers, they're just rebuilding. That's literally it. The, Herbert needs someone to throw to. If they can get Quinn and Johnson to have hands, then they might be okay. But 
Their defense is lacking. Their offense is lacking. They just need to protect Herbert. That's literally all they need to do. So, with that being said, I think Christian Wilkins and Max Crosby are going to have themselves a field day. And I'm going to go with the Raiders with this one. I just think they're just the better team overall. And it, they got that grit that they've uh, needed for so, so long. So, I'm going to go with the Raiders with this one. Following up, we have them boys, the Dallas Cowboys versus the Cleveland Browns. Dallas, same damn thing with them almost every year. Dak Prescott has himself a really good regular season and then completely pisses himself in the in the uh, postseason. He's good against bad teams, but he's kind of mediocre against good teams. That's Dallas for you in a nutshell. Be about Cleveland, you have Grupper Cleveland under center. So, uh, yeah, have fun with that. Um, this one might be a bit hard to pick because... Both have really good defenses, especially Cleveland. Cleveland had arguably the best defense last year. But the problem is, how long is Trayvon Diggs and Michael Parsons going to be in, uh, in cahoots with each other? Because I'm starting to see some fraction and tension between Dallas. So, I'm shockingly going to go with Cleveland on this one. I just think Cleveland's defense is, all, I think, a bit better because you have Miles Garrett there. And um, uh, some other players. And I do think that I think uh, Cleveland's offense is a little bit better. I But Dallas is the better QB. There's nothing that I can say that can really change anyone's mind. So, yeah, I want to go with the Browns with this one. But it's probably going to be Dallas because it's Dallas. Then we have the Washington Commanders versus the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Well, Washington, you got another QB in Jaden Daniels. And he might have an RG3-like career where he has one really good season and they kind of flame out after that. Look, I think Daniels might be okay. He might be fine. I just don't think Washington's really the best team for him to go to because they're still trying to get the stench of Dan Snyder off of them. And while they have tried to work... A lot of the people that they've hired has been kind of diminishing returns, like Dan Quinn. But Washington, they have a couple decent players on their team, but I don't think they're really going to be anything too, too, too special, if you ask me. Meanwhile, with Tampa Bay, that was probably the best they've looked since they went to the Super Bowl in 2020, when they became champions. And say that big quotation marks because that was COVID year. And that's a huge asterisk, if you ask me. But I digress. Uh, Baker Mayfield shockingly kind of turned his career around a little bit, which is weird to say. And Baker's still young. I think he's in his early 30s, I believe. So he's still got some years left in him. And not only him, but also Mike Evans signed a couple of extensions with Tampa Bay. So they're going to be staying here for a little bit. And not to mention, Ryan Jensen, uh, Ryan Jensen actually had to retire at the very young age of, I believe, 26 due to neck issues. And that sucks to say, or sucks to hear, because he was a really good center. But they have uh, Graham Benton, I believe is what his name is, uh, in the draft. So, curious to see how Tampa Bay is going to do this year. So, I think Tampa Bay is going to win. Uh, but who knows, maybe Washington might pull a fast one on them. But I think Tampa Bay is going to win this one. And then we get Sunday Night Football, and we have an NFC Wild Card rematch. Matt Stafford versus Jared Goff, two. Well, technically three. The Rams versus the Lions. The Rams, well, at least they made the playoffs last year. That's all you can really say. This team is going to go through a rebuild in about two years because, well, Aaron Donald announces retirement, and uh, Matt Stafford's going to be retiring sooner than later, I believe, because, for Christ's sakes, the dude's been in the league for 15 years, and injuries are starting to catch up with him, and uh, that and his wife has been making some unique choices in terms of uh, off-field antics, but I digress a lot so uh yeah i i don't know i think detroit or i think the rams are going to struggle this year because of aaron Donald's loss but who knows maybe they might be somewhat all right the lions 
they're an up-and-coming team. They're shockingly one of the most out of nowhere teams, I'd say in the past five years. Like this team literally from going down in the dumps to almost Super Bowl contenders in the span of a year. That is honestly amazing to me. And again, Jared Goff is revitalizing his career, even though he's a good QB, but he's not elite yet. It just depends on how their secondary is. Because their defense, I thought, was really good, but their secondary sucked last year. So I'm curious to see how things are going to go, especially with uh, Teron Arnold and um, I think uh, Kirby Joseph and uh, Brian Branch and Mafu Malafawu as well. So I'm curious to see how... Detroit's going to be well, at least with their secondary. With that being said, I still think Detroit's the better team overall. But who knows? Maybe that good old boy Stafford's going to pull another quick one on Detroit. So I'm going to go with the Lions with this one. But you can never count out Matt Stafford. And then we get the first Monday night game of the year. We've got the New York Jets versus the San Francisco 49ers. Last time that the Jets had a Monday night game, it went so well for them. Four snaps, and Aaron Rodgers tore his Achilles. This time it's going to be three snaps, and Aaron Rodgers tears his Achilles. Oh my god, that would be hilarious if it were to happen. Yeah, the Jets, I said it before and I say it again. Once Rodgers is injured for, for the season, your season is over, and look what happened. Meanwhile, the Niners, you went to the Super Bowl, and Kyle Shanahan choked it again. Good job. Good, good, good job there. Good job. Uh, shout out to Ricky uh, Parasol. That dude is, that. I swear I've never seen a human that's been, never been so more ballsy in my life. So, really quick, Ricky was going to like some kind of meet and greet or some kind of signing thing. And some kid came up to him, tried to steal his watch, had a gun on him. Lo and behold, he shot Ricky in the chest and Ricky shot him back. Ricky went to the hospital, and now, literally two days later, he's already lifting weights. This dude, the Terminator, I'm willing to bet. Like, I don't think he's going to be playing, though. I think he's going to sit out for a few games uh, because he's inactive. But still, dude, that is gutsy as all hell. That you got shot in the chest and you're already lifting weights after getting uh, this charge from the hospital. That's insane to believe. So... I'm curious how the Jets are going to be this year, but I still am going to go with the 49ers. I think they're just still a better team overall, but I'm starting to think that their Super Bowl magic might be running out quickly. So I'm going to go with the 49ers with this one, but who knows? Maybe Earl Rodgers can finally conquer his demons when it matters. So I'm going to go with the 49ers with this one. And that, folks, is going to conclude my NFL Week 1 predictions for the 2024 season hope you guys enjoyed these predictions again let me know in the comment section below what you got what you guys thought about these predictions and hopefully this season will be a little bit better than last season because last season was a bunch of chaos so thank you guys so much for watching this video make sure you guys leave a like leave a comment tap that big red subscribe button and tap the bell so when upload you guys will be notified thank you guys so much for watching this video most importantly join the herd talk to the next video peace out